Hey man, what's up? Uh, have you ever heard of uh, Valiant Thor? What? Valiant Thor. Valiant. Yes. Thor. Yes. Valiant Thor. Yes. Like th- Thor. What? Have you? <laughs> I I don't know how many times I can. Say oh yeah, yeah yeah I've heard of Valiant Thor. That's yeah. that college uh, that was like uh, <laughs> Valiant Thor Tech, you know? Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna hate this episode. <laughs> Is it an alien one? <laughs> Is it an alien one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> you got a picture of her? Yeah. I can tell you by the picture if she's crazy or not. I'm telling you right now, if someone approaches me and their argument against nukes involves aliens. I'm I'm not pro nuke, but in that situation, I'm pretty pro nuke. <laughs> There's a new book called Matthew, Mark, Nuke, and John. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because Nixon's an alien. Things I learned last night. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, th- so there's this guy named Valiant Thor. No, there's not. <laughs> Golly. Uh, in the 1950s, uh, a strange craft landed. <laughs> I hate it already. God <laughs> dang it, dude. Landed in a field outside. This is so dumb. <laughs> Wait till you hear the story. <laughs> You're gonna be so bad. Okay. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Uh, so I'm not even gonna say anything this episode. <laughs> this is all you, dude. Have fun. So it landed in this this field outside Washington D.C. and the police were called. They show up on scene, uh, and when the uh, craft opened up, like the <laughs> gate um, opened. Uh, they immediately drew the guns, expecting a fire. What kind of craft? Explain the craft. Is it I a don't disc? Know. I don't have any information okay. on the craft. Um, uh, they expected the inhabitants to do the same to draw whatever interplanetary weapons they also had. <laughs> uh, but they were shocked to find a peaceful man walking out of the cat craft. Um, <laughs> uh, Okay, let me tell you. Let me tell just you. go. Let me tell you, yeah, let me tell you from the beginning. Okay, so here's the thing. This story is ridiculous. <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, it might possibly, honestly, be the most ridiculous story I tell you on this show. Um, I don't believe that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> okay. be honest with you. I, I don't know. You told me that Sigmund Freud spent ten years of his life <laughs> dissecting eels. So well, that's a true that story. Point, I, that's a this, true story. But this, this is, one is made up. That's what you're saying. I, I heard it. I kind of think we it is. all heard I, that. Well, Every I, single one of us like, oh, that one was true. As opposed to the crap <laughs> I'm about to spew. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really buy it. Um, there's a chance though, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy it. I don't there's buy this story. I don't buy this story. I'll tell you that. Okay. But there is a chance that I do, <laughs> and the reason for it. So the reason for that chance is uh, uh, because uh, there is a handful of prominent figures in the U.S., like high-ranking officials in the military and in the government, who corroborate the story. Who they haven't uh, corroborates a strong word. Um, <laughs> they haven't said that it's wrong. No, that's that's too weak of a word. Um, <laughs> they have. They have referenced Valiant Thor in passing as if it was a normal accepted thing, um, and so they haven't said they haven't gone out and said. Or well, you just out to lunch with one of the generals, <laughs> you know, just at McAllister's yeah, eating, so- and he's just like, yeah. I mean, that movie just kind of reminds me a lot about this like Valiant Thor incident. Anyway, how's your Tuesday? <laughs> I've ever told you what Valiant Thor said to me on my 36th birthday. Well, you know, and there we were. It was uh, it was pretty crazy because I mean, like my this fantasy league right that I did. Uh, 
you know, and it was at the time where JFK wasn't president yet, right? So he was in the league, and then there was Valiant Thor, and he just did, did really bad in the league. But JFK won that year. <laughs> and he was like, "Hold on, back up. What did you say What'd about?" You say? <laughs> Uh, he said, you know, JFK wasn't dead yet. That's what I said. And you're like, no, 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 I understand how time works, <laughs> you know, but you said something I about time. I understand that it's before 1963. Sure. Mm-hmm. But Valiant Thor. Yeah. Can you talk so about that? spacecraft opens police surrounded ready to kill Why? whatever comes out peaceful man humanoid human human man human. person human uh, and he says um, <laughs> He says, "Hey, I, I don't mean you guys any harm. Uh, I need to talk to your emperor. Your <laughs> <laughs> Where is Joshua? Take Martin? me to the emperor <laughs> of the United States." He says, "I need to talk to your president." Um, uh, but he didn't say it. It was telepathic. Um, <laughs> no, you're joking. <laughs> Are you serious? And, and the police? Are you serious? Stop! Are you joking? Did he? I'm you're serious. saying that I'm he serious. said it telepathically. Said it telepathically. Shut up! The, the police, for whatever reason, all were of just them like, were like, they're like, okay, get in the car, and they drove him into D.C. Um, to the Pentagon, and they just pulled up the Pentagon and said, "Hey, this guy needs to talk to the president." And the Pentagon and the Pentagon was like, "This isn't where he lives. He came to the wrong house." <laughs> Yeah, this is the giant Pentagon. This is the star Pentagon. House. <laughs> this is the Pentagon house. Uh, he's at the white. He's house. at the white one. This is the tan they're house. They're like looking around. They're like, "There's a lot of white buildings <laughs> here." And they're like, "No, he's at the White House." <laughs> and we're uh, like, "Okay." So they go to the Capitol building, <laughs> and they're like, "We need to talk to the, the president. president." And they're like, they're "Like you guys are police officers mm-hmm. here locally. You should know." Where the White House is. How did that guy just say that to me without moving his <laughs> mouth? Is he some kind of ventriloquist? Ventriloquist four over here. Came out of the spaceship. <laughs> this guy comes out. He's just like. <laughs> Only time. That's what people keep puppet. seeing with the big eyes and the green. It's a puppet, it's right? A puppet. And a very talented ventriloquist, ventriloquist. right? And so. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Valiant Four. Yeah, he does a dumb voice too. Yeah, you're right. Instead of doing a normal voice, he decides to do a cartoonish. He does the alien voice. Hey, hello, hello. hello. I'm Valiant Four. Blah, 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 blah. Take me to your emperor. You know. <laughs> so they go to the Pentagon. They go to the Pentagon, and uh, as the story goes, the Pentagon. As the st- yeah, this is all made up. You can be- say whatever you want. <laughs> And it'll be just as true as what actually happened. They seem to be ready for him. Uh, like they were expecting. I was like, we heard the message too. Yeah, they said, yeah, we know he's here. Uh, and they take him uh, to the Pentagon, uh, into the Pentagon, uh, to an elevator. To the middle of it? Underground. Yeah, to the, the Pentagram chamber of the Pentagon. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not true. Uh, but the elevator uh, takes they him. They do down. have a wrestling ring in the middle. <laughs> that's the Pentagon. You know, <laughs> it's just like freaking. We'll settle this at the Pentagon. It's, I mean, that's what's in the middle of the Pentagon is the freaking alien fight club, yeah. right? Because like all the stuff they're getting, you know. Yeah. Originally, the UFC was gonna have a Pentagon, but the Pentagon was like, "Hey, we've got that trademark." Uh, actually, you can go with Octagon <laughs> if you'd like. We are Pentagon TM. Sorry <laughs> about that. So they uh, uh, they take him down to the basement where there's a subway that goes to the White House. Secret subway. Nobody knows about it except for the people who know about Valiant Thor. Yeah, there's um, a subway and also a subway. <laughs> there's a secret subway. We're going to take you to the secret subway. Oh, really? Does it take us somewhere? You ever been to a subway before? Yeah, you're going to get a spicy Italian. They walk it. Yeah, it's a secret <laughs> subway. And like, it's just, it looks like a dingy old place. And then someone goes, uh, and like all the stuff flips <laughs> over. Flips. And like this employee, this like sixteen-year-old kid walks out. Walks and it's like, um, do you want a foot long or a six-inch? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sorry, we're out of Italian herbs and cheese. And they go, honey oat. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> and then like they, I don't know what's in the Pentagon. <laughs> uh, so he gets on the subway. What are the Pentagon's listening to this? And they go, oh my god, these they two know. guys <laughs> have figured out. <laughs> That we have an we alien have wrestling league and, <laughs> and a secret subway. Subway. <laughs> subway, a proud sponsor of LW Wright and our <laughs> podcast. So, so uh, 
Uh, they take him to the White House and he gets to the White House and at the White House they were like, yeah, uh, let's go talk to the president. And so they where's take the subway station in the White House. Where's that pull up to the basement right where the, the White House's basement. Subway yeah, but is. I'm saying like where did the <laughs> stairs come up at you know the basement. No one's hearing like the like a, a subway train. Yeah, they tell him it's the Wi-Fi. <laughs> like, oh, that's just the our Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is super loud. <laughs> yeah, really, mine's quiet. Yeah, ours is. A, <laughs> ours is. Yeah, ours we, sounds like a train. I don't know. When you got top secret info <laughs> running through that Wi-Fi, you know, it's just pretty. It's like fiber, but really, yeah. and it's, it's like, like really. I mean, your Wi-Fi is like, yeah, the Wi-Fi is loud. Let it go. <laughs> Stop asking if about the Wi-Fi. the Wi-Fi again. <laughs> you stopped. If you ask about the Wi-Fi again, I'm pushing you in front of the tracks. I'm g- <laughs> What tracks? The okay. Wi-Fi tracks. I'm, Don't you know how the uh, internet works? You want to go see the basement? That's really great. It's not white. I mean, compose the rest of the house. Like we painted it. You know, pretty surprising. If you want to see it. Yeah, well, I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, so, sorry. Let me ask a different way. <laughs> Do you want to see the basement? Hey, really exciting news. October 30th in Kansas City, Missouri. We are doing a Tillin live show. Please get tickets. They're available right now on Tillin.com. Uh, and we're going to have special guests, a live episode, uh, Q&A, bunch of stuff. Tim right now is researching if we can get a monster truck there. You're going to love it. If you are anywhere near Kansas City or you're able to get there, we want to see you there. So please go to the website uh, and buy those tickets because the spots are limited. So Let's hang out and just keep making some amazing magic stuff together. Fiddle off, huh? Um, so he gets to the president's office, the Oval Office, if you will, um, and the president talks to him and is very interested in everything he has to say. Um, so long story short, basically, Valiant Thor is saying, um, "Hey, nukes are dangerous." I hate that we're gonna call him Valiant Thor. Can we call him VT or something? Uh, well, they actually called him Val, so we can call <laughs> <him> Val. <laughs> Here's the thing. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. When I picked this topic, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And I started researching it. I was like, man, this is a crazy story. Yeah, and the more I dug know. into it, the more I was like, I don't buy this, but I really want you to hear it. So, <laughs> so anyway, you know, Val. <laughs> so Val tells the president um, that nukes are bad. Not is just this, for us. Is this John F. Kennedy or is this? Uh, no, it's Eisenhower. Eisenhower before. Okay, because this is what year? Uh, in the early fifties, like 50, early fifties. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. 54, 55, No, yeah, like it, it, JFK 50s. didn't come until sixty one. That's right. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so he Val tells the president. Yeah. He says, Eisenhower. Yeah, he says, "Hey, eyes." Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Please call me Eisenhower." <laughs> Please call me Howard. Please don't yeah. say that ever again. Uh, so oh, all right, Izzy Howie. So, <laughs> they're so just getting, I hate that an alien form comes to Earth and they immediately get comfortable with it. They're just like, yeah, bro. Nah, bro we're well, taking our part. secret <laughs> subway on over to Izzy Howie. You we're get, get it, you Val. a spicy Italian. What we're is hop this? You on the train, Freaking take you to the press. Uh, the press. <laughs> so he's telling Eisenhower all about how nukes are dangerous and like they're not just bad for humanity, but they're bad for the entire universe. Is he from the future at this point? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, he's an alien. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I know, but I'm saying is he is an alien from the future? No. Okay. <clears throat> um, so he's saying he's saying that nukes are dangerous, not just for humanity, but they they would have ramifications for the entire universe. And so uh, we need to stop having them. And so he's telling Eisenhower, you need to get together with the other world leaders and create this sort of packed to stop it with the nuclear bombs um, and never do them again um, or have them at all because they're dangerous. Um, and so then in the middle of this conversation, this is one of my most favorite parts of the story. In the middle of the conversation, the vice president Nixon walks in the room Yeah, and Nixon greets valiant Thor like an old friend and is like, yeah, hey, Val. Nixon's an alien. <laughs> He's one of them, and they just kind of chop it up for a minute. He walks in, and knows his name. Yeah, he's like, Val, like, "What's up, Val? 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 <laughs> that's what the, that's what this is. Oh, Val. that's what this is. It's double V's for Val, <laughs> guys. Nixon, a- golly, <laughs> I'm in <Solve> now." <laughs> 
Val. Val. So Val, uh, Val and Nixon and Eisenhower put together a plan to brief the rest of the world about the dangers of nuclear bombs. Um, and Eisenhower is very thankful for Val's work. Um, so Eisenhower sets up an apartment for him in the Pentagon and Val says he'll stick around until like 63 or something like that. Um, he's like, he's like, I'll hang like, why that year? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I guess I'll hang around until November of 1963. <laughs> if I was to pick a random date, yeah, let's say the yeah. 22nd. Yeah, I and at which point I need to just never mind. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> so anyways, so he uh, 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 Val becomes like a- almost like a diplomat to the United States from space. They're like it uses perfect time, and we haven't named our next emperor yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually in a gap between our emperors. Yeah. Um. So so it's Val, um, year. Val, and then the rest of his team, uh, who their names are <laughs> Don, Jill, and Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> his group of humanoid human looking aliens. Well, he's Val, which is short for valiant Thor, <laughs> right? Yeah, and so the other ones are Donya Thor, Jillian Thor and Tanya. No, that's Thor. what I was going for. Yeah, <laughs> Jillian. <laughs> um, so over time, well, then Jill and Izzy Howard, right? They get <laughs> fall into love, right? But it's like, oh, but he's married. He's got a first lady. He's got a so so. Uh, uh, Valiant Thor is described as um, a handsome, uh, uh, tall white male, uh, about six feet tall. Yeah. Um, looks strikingly human, <laughs> except for his six fingers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, claims on each hand or just one of them. <laughs> one hand is good. Six on one hand. No, he's got six on both hands. Um, is it extra? F- okay. But he moves his hands really quick, so you can't really tell. Like it's he's always blurry. moving them. All the pictures are blurry. He's always moving his hands around. <laughs> Every they're like, why are you move your hands so much? He's like, ah, oh, no reason. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a thing I do. It makes me more memorable. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> and this is the only picture you've seen of Nixon's hands. Mm-hmm. And if you count them. It's a good point. There's six on each hand. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Valiant Thor um, uh, 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 creates this like pact between his alien species and the U.S. to say, "Hey, we're not going to do bombs anymore." Do other countries have alien stories? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, every cool. country in the world has them. Yeah, I just didn't know if like you know aliens were choosing the United States. No, no, no. They choose everybody. Well, I mean, but, but God chose the United States. That's what the Mormons <laughs> said. Well, here's, here's here's the way the aliens work. They're smart. They say they come to every country and they say you're the best country in the world. Um, we need your help. Don't mm. tell the other ones. Don't tell everybody else. Don't tell everyone else. You're the best. Um, they came to Emperor Norton too and said that they said you're the best. Don't tell anybody else. You're the so protector that. of Mexico. Yeah, you need to keep Mexico safe. Um, and so uh, but at the same time they were also saying to Napoleon you need to take over Mexico. <laughs> Basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to pit us against each other, <laughs> right? Pretty crazy. So uh, uh, Val works with the US for a few years, uh, but every time Eisenhower is supposedly going to come out with this information um, to stop nukes like he wasn't going to come out and be like, hey, an alien told me we can't nuke each other. Um, Obviously, <laughs> but he was going to come to the rest of the countries of the world and convince them that nukes were dangerous and we can't do them anymore. Um, the FBI or the CIA or the defense would come to him and say like block him essentially from doing that. And so he was getting red taped out of making this announcement. Um, and so Val Val knew this isn't going to work through the government. Somebody else influential is going to have to uh, break this news to the world to stir public opinion. So he goes. Yeah, uh, so he finds <laughs> I know where it's going. Go ahead. Writer and Christian evangelist Frank Strangis. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was going to be like a Hollywood producer or something. No, no, he goes to an evangelist. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Frank Strangis is an interesting guy uh, because he uh, uh, he has a degree in business. Um, and a degree in I don't know something something. He sounds like, like someone who would run a circus in like the 1910s. <laughs> the you strangest know? circus. The strangest things you've seen, you know. <laughs> and it's like a whole. It does sound like that. 
Um, Barnum and Bailey situation, <clears throat> uh, but he was a devout Christian, and so he left his career um, while he was a private investigator, and then he left his career also as a. Pro- and PI. Val was like, "We're also Christians." <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, so, so that was like, hey, you know how Jesus is coming back? <laughs> Did it? I told you. <laughs> you didn't have to say it. You know, it was just telepathically. Yeah, telepathically communicated to him. No, uh, so this this evangelist was he wrote a book. Um, here's here's where. So he wrote a book about the Bible um, and uh, specifically the story in Ezekiel where um, uh, there's a vision of an alien or not an alien, a vision of an angel that is described as a wheel within a wheel, a wheel turning within a wheel. Um, And so he says this has got to be aliens is his theory. Frank Strangest. Um, Why? Uh, because he's like he's like if you li- if you listen the wheel within a wheel it's kind of like a UFO it kind of looks like a flying saucer if you imagine it in your head that way. Uh, <laughs> if you imagine a flying saucer, it kind of looks like one. You know, like if you really like, <laughs> like if you think flying saucer and you think that thing might be a flying saucer, then when you think about it, it looks the same. Uh, that adds up to me. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so he he. Uh, so what Val is in, in the Pentagon yeah, and Val's like, in the Pentagon. Hey, can I borrow your phone? Uh, yeah, close to it. Uh, so this guy's on tour promoting his new book um, and he's at some church and talking about his book trying to sell his books um, and afterwards at his little book stand people are buying books. A lady comes to him and says I have something you'd like to see um, and so afterwards after he leaves she tells him that she's in the FBI and she says, come with me. And so she takes him to the Pentagon um, and walks him into Val's apartment. <laughs> yeah, hold on. We should knock first. He might be watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Val. <laughs> Val, I have a guest here. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you clean up today? Is it Frank? <laughs> Did you clean up today? <laughs> okay. We're going to give him a moment. Yeah. All right, Val. This is Frank Sturgis, a totally Strangest. sane person. <laughs> who did you say Sturgis? What did I say? Turgis? You said Sturgis. It's Strangis. Turgis. <laughs> okay. Strangis. Strangis. This is Frank Strangis, uh, who is a totally normal guy, <laughs> and uh, I was going to introduce him to you, Val, a totally normal guy. <laughs> All right. See y'all later. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pr- pretty and fair. Val is just in his apartment. Yeah, so Val's in his apartment. He walks him in and he says, "Frank." Of course, <laughs> Frank. I've called you here, <laughs> Frankie, uh, buddy. And so, just getting immediately comfortable with everybody. So he he proceeds to tell Frank that he read his book, um, and he's like, he's like, you're pretty close. Um, and so he tells him the real truth uh, that he read his book when. I mean, he probably. Ordered it on Amazon, read it in an airport <laughs> or something. You know what I was thinking the other day? What do people do in airports before Wi-Fi? Uh, what it, the same thing they did everywhere else before Wi-Fi? What are you talking about? No, but I mean, like, I mean, you go somewhere else without Wi-Fi, you just wait a couple minutes, whatever. But I mean, especially before Wi-Fi, people would show up at the airport like four hours early, and you don't have you don't have Wi-Fi. What are you doing? You didn't watch Netflix. You ain't, you read it? Are you reading the books at the newsstand? Like, is that what people did in the airports? They talk to each other. Like what did they do? They get food. I don't know. I think Wi-Fi changed their watch airports. as a millennial <laughs> tries to figure out what life before technology was. What are you talking about? Yeah, they talked to each other. They read books. They read the newspaper a lot. They so yeah, that's probably what happened. He they probably read. He probably bought it. At they a, sat a there and marveled over the fact that they were going to fly in a plane <laughs> high in the clouds, and they were like, "This is crazy. The technology can do this." They appreciated the world around them. They got to know their neighbors and the people that they knew and yeah. loved and cared for. And now we're just so sucked into our phones that we don't even hear the loud. Aliens train are landing us. all <laughs> around us. They're trying to get. Our, they're calling us by name. They're saying, they're in "Hey, the same room." Hey, 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 hey and you're just like. Man, I wonder what people did before this. 
you know probably talk to aliens. I don't know freaking encountered <laughs> aliens. <laughs> so tells Frank tells Frank. He says hey, you're pretty close. Uh, let me tell you the truth. Uh, he says uh, my name is valiant Thor. I go by Val uh, <laughs> uh, Val says uh, I'm from the planet Venus. Uh, Shut up. Okay, <laughs> it's what your Bible calls the morning star. Uh, and uh, uh, he says we're an alien race that uh, is part of a galactic federation that has been watching over the lesser races in the universe. Yeah, we're always the, the lesser intel- race, intelligent ones. Yeah, we're I mean, we're pretty dumb. Um, and uh, your governments have access to nuclear bombs that stand to threaten not only your race but all the rest of us. Um, and so we're trying to stop them without like coming in and making a scene. You know, we're trying to do it like quiet, you know, um, but your government keep blocking Eisenhower. Eisenhower has been trying, but your government keeps blocking him. And so I need somebody who um, is kind of primed to believe the story to go break it to the world. Um, and Frank is like, I, I'll be your willing vessel. Have you heard of Tillin podcast merch? That's right. We have a merch store full of Till and Brennan tees, hoodies, mugs, and so much more. We also make new designs for every single episode, but those are only available for a limited time. So get them while they're hot. Text Till into 66866 to get your Till and merch today. So Val tells Val tells Frank Val tells Frank even he's like he's like he's like look um, Christianity is pretty 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 close to the truth. Um, uh, here's the <laughs> thing though. The angels um, are aliens. The prophets. They're all aliens. Jesus is an alien um, and God's pretty unhappy with humanity. I'll tell you that God must be an alien. Then well, I mean, maybe uh, <laughs> he doesn't say explicitly like whether or not God's an alien, but he says God's pretty unhappy. He's kind of annoyed like fed up with us. Uh, but he wants to give us another chance to try to write the ship. He's like, you need to stop nukes. Uh, and so he just gets this Christian writer <laughs> the task of stopping nuclear bombs <clears throat> from being a thing. Um, and so Frank goes, he writes a new book, writes a new <clears throat> book called Matthew, Mark, Nuke, and John. <laughs> um, the Christian argue the Christian slash alien argument against nukes. Against the Christian alien. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if someone approaches me and their argument against nukes involves aliens. I'm I'm not pro nuke, but in that situation, I'm pretty pro nuke. <laughs> you know, I'm like we if the best argument you. you have against it is aliens told us not to. I think we should. You know, because that feels like aliens being like, you know what, you guys shouldn't have guns. You shouldn't, and we'd be like, oh. Yeah, we should get rid of those, and then they just come here and wipe us all out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty fair. So Val just said, "Hey, I, I need to help people turn towards God." And you just stop the nuke thing, um, and I don't know, whatever. Like, write a book or something. I don't know. So they write. Da, da, da. So, so Val, Val, and Frank write a book together. Um, but Frank's the only one who gets credit on the book because you know the alien thing. It's kind of hard to get profits. Yeah, you're not a citizen. It's, you don't have a tax <laughs> code. It's yeah, yeah. He he applied for an EIN, and they said, we "What do you put your address yeah. as? The Pentagon, apartment Venus. 405. <laughs> like you know, like <laughs> Pentagon Suite. What's the Pentagon's address? Is it just Pentagon? Do you can you just put on an envelope Pentagon, and like <laughs> they know how to get it there? I mean, they know where it is. Let me see the Pentagon address. Uh. Uh, I feel bad for the mail room at the White House because all of us wrote letters to them in like the third grade. Yeah, this is um, not worth it. I'll say that it. I mean, honestly, looking at these addresses, it looks like it's literally just the pen the suite number first and then the Pentagon Washington DC was it cut. Like if you Just scroll pull through, up the yeah, scroll through. These are all the different secretaries you can mail to. It looks like it's the secretary 1000 right, defense right. Pentagon Washington. I think it literally is. I think it literally is. You just write Pentagon. defense Pentagon. So it's whatever I think. No, it, I that's think it's joint sweet. staff Pentagon. I think it's sweet department and then Pentagon Washington DC Pentagon address. 
That's what I Google. What do you think I didn't Google Pentagon address? What do you think I Googled? Address Washington DC. Ah, <laughs> uh, is the Pentagon real? <laughs> how do you get there? What road is this? I don't know, man. That's interesting. The Pentagon's not on a road. It's just the Pentagon. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, you were right about the Pentagon not having an address. You were right about the subway. You, you were right about the Pentagon. Pentagon. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> they were like, okay, hold on. Now they've given out our mailing address. Okay. <laughs> I think we got to shut this podcast down. <laughs> yeah. Which is why our address is just podcast <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri. If you'd like to mail us anything, if you just put podcast, can we try to apply for that as our address? Like, can we apply? Can we make podcast road or what? What are you talking about? No, can we just contact the government, the local government, and be yeah. like, hey, can you just make? You no, know, I know podcast. a guy who could help us. Just call the USPS and just be like, hey, this is my address now. It's kind of like like phone numbers. Where you can get those vanity phone numbers. <laughs> yes, hello. Can I talk to the emperor, please? <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy. No, I know a guy who can help us. Yeah. Uh, hey, w- I know you're busy doing the whole Applebee's thing right now, but could you <laughs> like uh, just throw in like a little favor for? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I understand. Thank you. <clears throat> what did he say? He said he knew I said Frisco earlier. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so all of our earnings this month are gone. Are gone. Ah, oh, bummer. Um. So uh, uh. So he writes this. <laughs> he writes this book. I'm just. Gonna, I'm at a loss. With this guy, man. He writes the book. Um. Frank Strangest. Frank Strangest writes the book. Uh, and here's we here's, obviously have to buy the book. Here's yeah. Can you buy it on Amazon still? Yeah, it's for sale uh, on Amazon. The link is in our bio. Uh, so on all our social media. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing: his book is like one of the only real sources you can find this story. Obviously, um, he made it up. <laughs> it at all signs point to him making it up. Here's the thing, though. It's like, it's like you doing a whole episode on like, bro. Have you heard about the year 1984? So there's this great book. It's the only source that all this stuff actually happened in 1984, right? All there's uh, everyone, everyone else history. They're like, no, nah, it didn't happen. But this book, you know, tells the story. I guess you know, Eisenhower's gone. <coughs> eyes, good old eyes. <laughs> they're walking around. Building. Anybody got eyes on eyes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so here's here's a couple of things. Okay, here's a couple of things with this though. Ridiculous story. Lots of evidence that Frank Strange just make it, made it up, right? Right. Um, and lots of just like stereotypical alien tropes in it. Like he walks out of the spaceship, says, "I come in peace," and says, "Take me to your leader." And then he's got problems with nukes. Claims to be Jesus, sort of like claims to. Like it's kind of combining all the alien stories together. Yeah, it's kind of putting it all together. Um, but here's a couple of interesting things. There's a photo of him. No, there's not. There's a photo of him. It. And here's the thing that gets confirmed is the leaders in the military. These are prominent people who say, yeah, that's Valiant Thor. Um, they don't say who he was or what he did, but they say, yeah, that's Valiant Thor. Um, you want to see it? Yeah, obviously. No, on, I would prefer the not far to right. Uh, and this was at one of Eisenhower's speeches um, and a lot of high ranking government officials just say yep, that's him and this is outside the book. People have asked them and they say yeah, that's Valley Thor which is strange um, because Valiant Thor is not a traditional given name <laughs> uh, and he looks like just a normal guy. Uh, I mean, it could be a picture of anyone, but the fact that there is, I mean, there's about a dozen government officials who have said, yeah, that's Valiant Thor, but where's Tanya? I don't know where Tanya is. Uh, I don't and know Don. If photos of Don and Jill. Jill. Yeah, there's no photos of his team. Okay. Uh, so uh, 
uh, but that's the only picture we have of him. That's the only photo we have of him. Um, Where's he speaking at in that picture? Well, it I looks like know. an event. I don't know. Yeah, it's Eisenhower speaking at some event. Um, and uh, also, Eisenhower's great granddaughter now um, is like campaigning around the world, like travels the world, telling the Valiant Thor story. No, she does not. Yes, shut because up. Because she says it's true. What's her name? She says. Let me show. It, see a picture of her. Okay, hold on a second. Her name is Laura. Let me look at Laura. I if her name was Jill, I was going to flip my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she travels the. You got a picture of her? Yeah, I'm pulling it. I up. can tell you by the picture if she's crazy or not. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Call crazy. <laughs> Let's look at this one, huh? You chose the good one, too. I tried to hide the bad one. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this, but that is not a sane person. So she travels the world campaigning. That's a true story. Was oh, she- this was better. Holy crap. <laughs> Let me see. I didn't, I didn't look at all. We'll put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> So she travels the world campaigning for you know, she claims that her father or her great grandfather now uh, signed this journey treaty. to truth podcast is one that she was ever she she was on. <laughs> That's a believable title discussing so she, the journey towards full disclosure. <laughs> so she 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 says that her great grandfather signed a treaty with the aliens. Uh, I so Eisenhower the actual president and uh, the line the Look family the promo material for some of the stuff that she's on. How do I go back? <laughs> you see what I'm saying like I mean like I, I took that picture in a dark closet bigger question season one Laura Eisenhower the great granddaughter of President Eisenhower talks about MJ 12 bases on Mars and an extreme secret space program. I what's that face? That's the face of oh, I can't buy that. Dr. Dream and Laura Eisenhower, <laughs> metaphysical soul couple on <laughs> faroutradio.com. The more you search this person, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. The more you search this person, faroutradio.com, the more you look these things up, the faster it becomes just like it's ridiculous. It is. Ridiculous. It is. I mean, they're a couple. This is her and him together. That's what they look like. We're going to okay. send all these pictures to Connor, by the way, but to, I mean, like we don't need to judge her. Well, I'm not judging anybody. I'm saying that you want me to base reality off of that person. No. Absolutely not. Here's, here's what here's what I'm saying you because I mean for the audio experiences. Okay, she looks like you know imagine the uh, basically the mom from Princess Diaries, right? That like painting in the loft, kind of like frizzy hair, like uh, crazy oils person. Like her eyes are always just full and wide, and she's married to a guy who dresses like a pirate. You understand? Like <laughs> the bandana, <laughs> the fluffy white shirt. Like yeah. that's. I mean, and you're saying that this is a reliable. Like you're not saying it, but people are like, this is a reliable source for information, and I'm saying uh, no. Well, her. Great grandfather is President Eisenhower. Yeah, so she's reliable. I really hope that my great grandkid is not a, a <laughs> crazy person. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that is rough. Um, anyway, she claims that her family has signed a treaty with the aliens. Obviously, um, well, they've got a bunch of NDAs as well. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, supposed to talk about it, but she is. Um, that's why they made her look crazy. That's Photoshop. All that stuff is well. Photoshop. She got a lawyer to sign it in New Venus, right? So it's an NV uh, NDA. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Um, so uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I wanted to believe I defeated this story. You on this one, I beat you down on it. I, I was like, no, nah, this one's not real. I, I, here's the thing. I, I didn't believe it. I wanted to believe this, that's this okay. story. When I've heard the like, I heard the like plot line. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. That sounds cool. Um, but the more I dug into it, the more I was just like, this guy, this this author just made this up. This author totally just made this up. Took a bunch of alien tropes and just kind of ran with what it. What did Frank Strangers look like? Um, I don't know. Actually, I'm willing to bet he looked a lot like Val. 
four. Uh, here's 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 one of the probably the 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 nail in the coffin though for it. While I look up Frank Strangest, uh, the story of Valiant Thor um, is almost exactly the same uh, as the story, the plot line from uh, uh, a ET. <laughs> 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 a movie called the day the earth stood still which came out only six years before he released his book. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I so mean, is it aliens or plagiarism? <laughs> you know, um, oh, yeah, this guy looks like freaking Guillermo from <laughs> <What>? <laughs> from uh, <laughs> what we do in the shadows. Oh, no, <laughs> he does. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Look at that picture. He, does. he looks like Guillermo. He does. Like, he, does. <laughs> he does. Oh no. <laughs> so I don't. So know. is he an alien enthusiast or a vampire? You uh, decide. You decide. I guess. <laughs> Why don't you vote in our Discord? <laughs> and let us know your thoughts. So, anyways, um, a metal band uh, was started in 2001 uh, in honor of Valiant Thor, uh, called Valiant Thor. I assume. Um, the members are Iggy Thor, Delmos Thor, Storm Thor, Elden Thor, and Valiant himself. Um, Is that what it's called, Valiant himself? Yeah, that's his legal name. He changed it. Um, you can't uh, joke. People do that. Uh, and uh, uh, Valiant literally came to start this metal band. He came back and he said, "Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. I got this great <laughs> genre of music that's really <laughs> blowing up right now." <laughs> I just think this is the answer of the world. No nukes and mosh pits. <laughs> no nukes and more metal. Uh, and so, uh, one of my favorite parts about it is the band. Our first show is in the Pentagon. <laughs> everybody in the band has names. That there was a Don Thor, a Jill Thor. So they all based their name off of Thor. Strangest was one of the guys. And then there's a guy, Professor Nightwolf. <laughs> <laughs> How big is this band? Is this an orchestra? <laughs> well, those are past members, so people have rotated. Oh yeah, yeah. Someone goes for a while, and they're like, "Oh no, you guys take this way too seriously." Yeah, they're like, "Oh, this isn't a joke." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you tell uh, me, Laura Eisenhower is our tour manager. This is gonna be a nightmare. This is gonna be rough. Uh, yeah. So they, uh, um, they had a song in uh, EA's Skate back in the day, <laughs> um, and then they've been on. They were on Fantasy Factory. Uh, and Guitar Hero Three, so Valiant Thor, uh, <laughs> big deal, I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, I I really wanted to believe this story. I didn't. I knew you were gonna hate it, so that's the only reason I told you. Uh, Great. <laughs> so uh, that's Valiant Thor. Uh, maybe who knows? He could be up there watching over us. Yeah, I mean, the you know, because you got Val, yeah, Izzy Howie, yeah, Nikki Nix, yep. Uh, and they're just up there. They're all aliens. Yeah, but you know those six fingers on each hand really gives them the ability to fiddle off. Give them an edge. Just a little extra, like. <laughs> Things alone last night is a production of Space Tim Media, produced by Christian Taylor. Audio is edited by Alex Garnett. Video by Connor Betts. Social media is run by Caleb Walker, and graphic design by Caleb Goldberg. Our hosts are Jaron Myers and Tim Stone. Please follow us on social media at Tillin Podcast. That's T I L L N Podcast. Leave a review, comment, subscribe wherever you are. Thank you for listening to Things I Learned Last Night.